In this video, we're going to take a look at sine and cosine and figure out exactly how to use them and finish off with creating a circle behavior. I'm John with Game Dev HQ, and every week we create amazing content focused on all things Unity. Our mission is training professional developers, so make sure to like and subscribe and check us out at gamedevhq.com. So here we are in Unity, and before we do anything, we need to understand what cosine and sine actually are, and we might as well involve tangent while we're at it. So what do cosine, sine, and tangent actually look like on a graph? Well, if we open up Google, we can actually visualize what a sine wave looks like. I can type here sine of x, and it's gonna give us a graph that looks like this. And you'll see here that as I move my mouse to the right, it's basically hopping between negative one and one. As time progresses, the value of x and y are changing. This is a sine wave. So it just basically ping pongs between negative one and one. Right now, at zero seconds, we're at zero on the x, zero on the y. At about two seconds, we're at one on the y. And here, at about five seconds, we're at negative one on the y. And basically, that could be, for example, the position of an object as time is progressing. Now let's look at a cosine of x. Cosine of x looks, honestly, identical. Looks pretty similar, right? As time progresses, we're once again ping-ponging back and forth between negative 1 and 1. The only difference between a sine wave and a cosine wave is that a cosine wave, and this isn't super important for you to really know and understand, but it does lead 90 degrees ahead. So the cosine wave is indeed um, 90 degrees ahead of a sine wave. So if you were to actually put these side by side, the cosine wave would come first. Now, when you're working with sine and cosine in Unity, for the most part, a lone sine wave and a lone cosine wave are pretty much the same and they behave the exact same way. Where it gets interesting is when you work together with sine and cosine, which we'll be doing later in this video. And while we're at it, let's visualize what is tangent. So if I say tangent of x, we're going to get a graph and it's going to look super messed up. This here, as time progresses, is just between negative infinity and positive infinity. Once again, we're just ping-ponging between negative infinity and positive infinity. So tangent is more suitable for when we're calculating an angle, but sine and cosine are very suitable for when we need to create waves, when we need to create circles. And I'm gonna show you how we can create basically a moving platform if we wanted to using a sine wave or a cosine wave, as well as how we can actually create a circle behavior using sine and cosine. So before we can even begin coding an exercise here, we need to understand what sine x is and, and cosine x is and when to use them. For example, how do I know that cosine of x is supposed to be for the x-axis and sine of x is supposed to be for the y-axis? How would I know that? Well, let's take a look at a triangle here for just a moment. So here's a triangle. It's a right triangle. And what I wanna do here is say we want to calculate the angle of this axis. We can do that using the inverse tangent, and we covered that in the previous video. So to help us understand how to use sine and cosine, let's draw out the acronym SOHCAHTOA. If I wanted to know the angle of this triangle for where this arrow is pointed, we would use the inverse of tangent, or tangent here, which is the opposite over the adjacent, which we discussed is opposite of the angle, which is here. So this is the opposite, which would be Y, over the adjacent, which is x, and that's here. So that is going to be used for calculating an angle. We're not gonna be doing that here, so we're not gonna actually worry about tangent. What I wanna know is what is so ka. So here, this is sine, and sine of this angle is opposite, which is y, over hypotenuse, which is this guy. This long angle here is the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine, if we look at this, is going to be cosine of this angle is adjacent, which is x here, over the hypotenuse, which is, again, this one. So why is this important and what does this mean? Well, if we look at this again, you'll see here that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is our y. So anything we want to manipulate along the y-axis 
is going to use sine. This is going to be our sine. And then anything that's going to be manipulated on cosine, which is adjacent over the hypotenuse, is going to be on the x-axis. So we affect the x of an object using cosine. And then we affect the y of an object using sine. So that is how we know where we place our sine and cosine functions. Now that we understand that, we can actually begin looking at sine and cosine and seeing how they work in unity. Here is our little ghost sprite. I'm going to create a new C# -sharp script and we're just going to call this we're just going to call this ghost and attach it to our ghost object. Now, what I want to do here is we know that we can manipulate the position on our x using cosine and we know that we can manipulate the position on our y using sine. What's important here is to know exactly what we need to actually do. So how do I make use of sine and cosine? And what's the objective here when I'm using sine and cosine? Well, if I wanted the ghost to have a behavior of kind of levitating and floating, I want to manipulate him on the y. So I'm going to use sine of x. And what's important here when working with sine of x is that as time progresses, we ping pong between positive one and negative one. If we're frozen, we're not moving. If time is still, we're not moving. However, if we progress through time, we ping pong between positive one and negative one. So let's take a look at implementing this. Here I am in our ghost script, and all I want to do here is just manipulate the y position of our object. So I'm going to say transform.position equals a new vector 3, and I can pass in a new x, y, and z position. Right? This is going to set our position constantly to vector 3.0, basically. To clean this up and to make it a little bit more easier to read, I'm just going to create here a float x variable, float y, and then a float z. These are just going to store position values, and then here I'm just going to fill them in, x, y, and z. That way I'm not working with a long line of code. So now that I have float x, y, and z, what are we doing? Well. I want to basically manipulate the y. I want my x and z to stay the same. So here, I'm just going to say the x is going to equal the transform.position.x, and the z is going to equal the transform.position.z. y means to equal the sine wave. And to do that, we say mathf.sine, and we pass in a float value. That float value is our time. We're moving through time, and we're ping-ponging between 1 and negative 1. So to move through time, we add time.time. .time. We can save this, and you'll see here that our ghost has a very realistic floating, levitating behavior. And there you go. This is a sine wave. I'm moving up and down along the Y using a sine wave, and we have our floating ghost. Let's say here, I wanted to adjust it so that it floats a little bit higher. You'll see here in the position property that our y is ping-ponging between negative 1 and positive 1. Now how could I make it go to say 2.5 and negative 2.5? That's where we get into something called amplitude. Amplitude lets us specify how high the sine wave goes and how low the sine wave goes. So for example, I can create a variable here, private int will say amplitude. And if I wanted to modify this in the inspector, we can add a serialized field attribute. And then whatever amplitude is set to, let's say right now it's currently set to 1. Whatever it's set to, we can just multiply the sine function by that. So here, we're doing a sine wave multiplied by the amplitude. If we save this, hop back into Unity, and if we select our ghost, in real time, we can now actually change it from an amplitude of, of default 1, which is between 1 and negative 1, to an amplitude of, say, 2.5. Or we won't be able to do 2.5, it's an integer value. But now I'm doing 2, and you'll see here that our y value is going between 2 and negative 2. If I were to set this to, say, 3, we're now going between 3 and negative 3. So you can imagine how you could use this for platforms in your game and all sorts of different activities. The next thing you could even do here is you can add a frequency. If you wanted to control the speed of this, you can include what's known as a frequency. So let's say here we had a variable to store the frequency of the moves. So here we say private int, we'll say, and let's make this actually a float so that we can make it a small value. We'll say frequency. 
And let's set it to 0.1f for now. And what we can do with this frequency here is we multiply it by how quickly we're moving. So right now we're just moving one second at a time. But what I can do is if I wanted to multiply that by the frequency, we're now moving at 0.1, basically time, right? Or 0.1% of that time. Um, and if it was five, we would be moving at 5x1. So five, you can think of it as like five seconds pace. A little confusing. But let's check this out. So now we have an amplitude and a frequency. And I need to make sure that the frequency is available in the inspector. So we need the serialized field attribute. And by setting the frequency to 0.1, we now move at a speed of 0.1. And you'll see here it's super slow. But if I increase the frequency, we move much quicker. So if I actually were to set that to say seven, we're now bouncing up and down, right? So that's how we can use sine to manipulate the y-axis. Let's check out what we can do with cosine. It's the exact same thing. I can take this mathf.sine here, I'm going to comment this line out for float y, or I'm going to just comment this line out. We'll recreate it, just so we still have it. And let's re-add float y equal to the transform.position.y so that the y stays the same. This time, let's manipulate cosine. So float x is going to be mathf.cosine followed by time.time. .time. So as we progress through time, the x position is going to ping pong between negative 1 and positive 1. And you'll see here now we're moving left to right between positive 1 and negative 1. If I wanted to include the amplitude, I can multiply it by the amplitude, and that will adjust the height or the length of the cosine. So here it's going to compile, and you'll see here that the amplitude set to 1, but if I set it to 5, we're now moving back and forth between 5. Last but not least, we can include frequency by going into the progression of time, multiplying it by how quickly we'd like to move. And by applying the frequency, we can now slow it down and control it. We can create moving platforms very simply using sine and cosine waves. Now it gets a little bit more interesting. Sine and cosine are exactly the same for the most part when they're alone. But what happens when we combine them? Let's say here I were to uncomment out the float y. We have float x and we have float y. Cosine and sine are now being used together. And when we do this, this is how you get a perfect circle behavior. You'll see here that our ghost, if I increase the frequency here, so that is now moving in a perfect circle. Because sine and cosine together create circles. So this was a very high level overview of sine and cosine. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are able to implement this in your own projects. Let me know what you think of this coding math series. I want you guys to understand that you don't have to be incredible at math to understand how to work with math in Unity. If you guys want deeper understanding or if you want a deeper dive into the actual logistics of the mathematics and to kind of further hard code the mathematics, let me know. Otherwise, um, I think what you really need to know as game developers is the high level overview of how to work with math and being able to explain it and understand it so that in a job interview, you would understand what's going on.